Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today we have a super fun and exciting video that I've been planning to do for quite some time and I've finally gotten around to it. I am going to walk you through the Onefinity user interface. It is the user interface you use to control the Onefinity, which is behind me. And so there have been some questions, there's been some confusion on the forums about exactly how to set up the machine and how to use it. So I just wanted to walk through a quick from when you flip the switch on until you start using your machine, introduction to the user interface to get people comfortable and familiar with how to use the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use my computer to control the machine because my machine is connected to the Wi-Fi in my house here. However, everything that I do on my computer, you can do from the touchscreen interface without any issues. You just got to use your finger instead of your mouse. All right, let's go ahead and cut over to the computer screen and I will show you what the screen looks like when you first power on the machine. What you see in front of you here is the exact screen you get when you first power on your Onefinity. The first thing it's going to ask you to do if you want to home your machine. Now in this particular case I am going to cancel that because I want to walk you through the user interface before we do any operations on the machine. But normally what you would want to do when you power it on the first thing you'd want to do is home the machine. And I will talk in detail about what homing is and why it's important to the operations of the machine. So let's go ahead and click cancel. The basic layout of the Onefinity user interface is fairly straightforward. On the left hand side here you have this little touchpad or keypad that allows you to manually move your machine. In the center it shows you the position of the machine and some state information which I will get to in just a minute. In the sort of center section here you can see that it has some additional state information as well as some information about how the machine moves, how fast it's moving and whatnot the remaining time and the estimated time of completion. On the lower left hand side here you have some play buttons and some pause buttons and this is where you upload your file to the machine. You have a drop down here that allows you to select different G-code files. And then some icons here that, that control this preview screen here. Now I am using Chrome on my computer that allows this preview to work. If you are on the touch screen of the One Infinity, the preview does not work. The Raspberry Pi software is not does not have the appropriate ability to render this on that little touch screen. So you can change the size of this preview as well by clicking this little sort of size icon if you want to minimize it and shrink this down if you are using your Raspberry Pi on the little touch screen, that's what I would recommend, but when you have a full screen monitor, um, it's okay to leave it big if you want to. The last portion of the user interface is uh, the actual G-code itself. It'll show it to you here, and as the machine is running, it'll show you what line of G-code is executing, which can be particularly useful if something happens with the G-code or you get an error for some reason, it'll highlight the line that actually failed. All right, now let's dive a little bit deeper into some of the settings in the machine and I'll talk about some of the things that maybe cause some confusion for new users that might be different than from other machines, for example. So let's start over here on the right hand side and talk about this state. What this is telling me right now is the machine is unhomed and we have not set a zero for any of the axes. And now what is the difference between homing and zeroing? Well, homing tells the machine what its outer boundaries are. In this case, the machine will home to the front left-hand corner because of the way I have my machine configured. Once the machine is homed, it knows through the soft limits set in the settings area how big the cutting area is and how far it can travel in the X, Y, and Z directions. So that's really important so the machine doesn't slam into the rails on the left-hand side or the right-hand side or the back. Now I will tell you, having previous machines that did not have this feature, I have routinely slammed the machine into the back unknowingly. Usually happens when you're in the middle of a critical operation while you're cutting or doing some sort of milling and then your work piece is ruined. So that's unfortunate, so it is good that the Onefinity here has that feature. So because I have just turned my machine on, it has not yet been home. So what I will do is I will go ahead and tell it to home itself by clicking the home icon here. Now, when you select this specific icon, it tells it to home all axes X, Y, and Z. You can tell it to home individual axes if you want to with the X, 
the Y and the Z if you want to home a specific axis for some reason or another. So let's go ahead and click Home. All right, well, so the machine homed, and what you can see, most everything on the screen has turned green. That is the indication that the machine is ready to operate, and you can see the states have changed to homed for everything except for the Z. Now, you will notice that the Z axis here says over. What that is trying to tell you is based off the current G code file that you have loaded that the machine is not capable of reaching some of the file limits in that G-code file. In some cases, it might also say under, depending on where your machine is and what the zero is set to. So once we set the zero on the machine and select an appropriate G-code file, the error should go away and it should say OK. So I'm going to go ahead and select here a file that I actually used just recently which will be a future video. So if you're not already subscribed, recommend that you do do that and ring that bell, very important these days. All right, so let's select the front panel. Let's see, we'll do the pocket, for example. You'll notice that the render here changed. I will blow this up to make it a little bit easier to see. All this is is just a front panel of the CNC controller that I am building. And this is the bore operation, as you can tell. So I'm gonna walk over to the machine and I am going to zero it on the X axis and hopefully, our icon will change to OK. All right, fairly straightforward, uneventful. You can see the minute that I selected the zero button here, the machine went from the under to the okay, because it now knows that what its soft limits are relative to the G-code file, and it is safe to cut. I generally zero each axis individually on the X, Y, and Z manually. Alternatively, you can use the touch probe. I do have a touch probe, however, I have not set it up yet, so I have not used it, so I don't have any experience with this particular machine uh, and the touch probe. The next area of the user interface that folks might want to investigate are these tabs here directly below this control panel, which I will talk about in a minute. The tabs here allow you to do an automatic control of the machine. That is where it'll run the G code automatically. You can click on MDI here, which stands for manual data input, where you can type in manual G code and execute it by clicking the play button here. The messages area is where it'll show anything that happens with the G code while you're running it. If there's an error, for example, it'll pop up this little message tab and show you what the specific error is with your g-code. The last area here is this indicators tab which is very interesting has some lots of very useful information especially if you're using a variable frequency drive. Um, so this shows you the state of all the pins that are on the breakout that DB25 on the back of the controller it shows you the state of all of these pins and so if you are using it to uh, have a manual e-stop or if you're controlling a VFD uh, or if you have some sort of uh, issue with your motors it'll show some information here now generally don't ever need to go here unless you're investigating something specific but it is fairly useful to understand what the state of that DB25 is the next area of the user interface that I would like to focus in on is this keypad here and the buttons down below to talk about how to actually control the machine. So what this keypad does is it allows you to manually move your machine by a set distance. And in this case, it defaults to the point 0.1, 1, 10, and 100 based off the scale that you have set here, and it is set to metric. 
So you can select this drop down to select between metric and imperial. So if I were to change it to imperial, you can see here that it changes this to 0 0.005 or 5 thou. You have 0 0.05. 0.5 and 5. So in this case this would be inches. I usually leave my machine set to metric. Um, even though I do most of my cam operations in Imperial, I do output them in metric because there was a bug in earlier version of the software that caused some issues with the Imperial cam for some reason. So I just leave everything set to metric. And I'm trying to train my American brain uh, to understand millimeters and what distances really mean. It's been a little bit of a challenge for me, but um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there so hopefully you can get there as well so in this case we can jog the machine uh, uh, forward uh, in the y direction or backwards in the y direction left and right with the X and then up and down with the Z now there are four other buttons on the screen that I find useful occasionally which is the jog plus X plus Y the minus X plus Y minus x minus y and then minus y plus x so what that means is it'll go forward to the right forward to the left backwards to the left backwards to the right so that's pretty useful if you want to maybe put your machine to the center very quickly you can set it to maybe 100 for example and then tell it to uh, jog forward to the left and right now i do not have my dust shoe on so i will not jog the machine right now and move it around it might destroy something so the other area just below the touch screen this is where you can use the automatic probing function of the machine to set the zero so that is very useful if you have a touch plate like you can get from onefinity and you can probe x y and z which will set your x zero your y zero and your z zero or we just do a z zero when i use a touch probe i generally do it for z only i don't I'll, use it for X and Y. I usually eyeball that depending on where what I'm doing. The reason I generally do that is because I do a lot of cutting with wood and I don't usually cut right up to the edge of the wood. I set the zero further in so that's where I just generally eyeball the X and the Y and then use it to set the exact Z height which I find a lot more reliable and a lot easier to do than a piece of paper like I did earlier. The next area of the user interface that I want to run into is the flyout menu here. So this little three bars, if you click this, it'll fly out some different settings areas. I'm going to walk through these very quickly. You should not have to come here very often. You really only need to do it while you're setting up your machine, but I do want to walk through some of it. Now, the one area that I will tell you that you should use uh, on a, every single time you use your machine is the shutdown button. So in the flyout menu in the version uh, 304, they actually added a shutdown button here because the Onefinity is based on the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is based on Linux, a Unix operating system. It is important that you tell the machine that you are turning it off. Simply killing the power can have very bad effects to the operating system if it is in the middle of doing something or if it has some file that is open that it is writing to. It could corrupt the machine and might even break the operating system. So highly recommend that you shut down your machine each time you use it rather than just killing the power. The next area in the flyout menu I want to cover is the settings area here. This is where you can set a variety of different parameters. So if you are using the touch plate, you can set the size of the touch plate here and how fast it does the seeking function while it's setting its values. There are some stock areas here where you can change the G code, what the machine does when it starts running a file, when it does a tool change operation, or when the program ends. So in some cases, many people like the machine to return to a specific location when the machine is done cutting, like move Z all the way up, for example, and then jog to some known position. So you can put that in here, and the Onefinity will append that to every G code file that you operate on. So rather than having to put it in the post processor, you can do it right here and it'll do it every single time so that can be particularly useful if you you know if you like the machine to go to a specific location or if you want to set a specific type of operation like say for during a tool change for example last thing down at the bottom here is the max deviation this is where you can tell the machine how to interpolate between two different move operations this is generally used for curves and arcs uh, I would not change it just leave it the way it is um, unless there's something specific you're trying to achieve uh, the same with the acceleration here on the corner speed this is an advanced function of the Onefinity that most other CNC machines running something like Gerbil do not have what this allows you to do is as the machine is entering a hard 90 degree turn it will automatically slow down so that it doesn't jam the bit into the corner and then pull the bit out so this is an advanced feature and very helpful to control the axial load on your end mill 
Next area of the user interface is the motors area. Now all of these are essentially the same. The difference is that uh, motor zero in this case is X, motor one is Y, motor two is the other Y motor, and then motor three is Z. So what you do here, this is where you can tweak your drive settings and your current uh, for the homing operation. And so that allows you to dial in your machine a little bit so that the homing operation can be more reliable. Now the new version of the software apparently changes the homing procedure, so you might not need to adjust it as much as you would with the current version that I have. Uh, I have not tried it yet, so I can't really make any commentary on that. Earlier I mentioned why you want a home is to set the boundaries of the machine so that it knows what its outside boundaries are for X, Y, and Z. This is the area of the settings where you can change those values. So right here you have the limits, it's known as soft limits. You can set how big the machine is. So if you wanted to artificially constrain the machine for some reason or another, you can change the soft limit max. If you wanted to change essentially the zero position of the machine, you can do so here. Here as well. The cutting size of the woodworker that I have is 32.25 and 32.25 in the X and the Y direction, which is uh, slightly bigger than the 816 millimeters that is set here on the screen. That is actually okay with me. I do lose an eighth of an inch in cutting capacity by having the soft limit set a little bit smaller, but I think it's safer than, you know, possibly having the machine hitting the end stops on the back or the front of the machine while it's doing the cutting. So I just kind of left it at the default value here. The last area of the motor setup I want to cover is this travels per revolution section. This is the one thing that I did change on the machine that from its default settings. So what does this do? This tells the machine how far the motors move the machine for one revolution of the motor. And so when I first set up my machine, one of the first things that I tested is when I tell the machine to go a certain distance, does it actually go that distance? Well, it turns out that whenever I set the machine to its home position all the way to zero, and then I commanded it to move 32 inches in any direction, it went 32 in just a little bit, <laughs> about a 16th further than it should have traveled. So what I did is I went in here and I actually changed the value that it thinks that it is turning the machine so that it's a little bit lower. Setting this value is not very complicated, but I did do a post on the Onefinity forum explaining the process and what I did to get there and the formula that I used to compute the value for this field. So if you're interested in that, please follow the link below and go to the forums, check it out. So the next area of the user interface is the tool area. If you have a variable frequency drive or a spindle, this is where you would set up all the options for that. I do not have that, so I have not changed anything here. So we're just going to go ahead and skip to the next section, which is the I.O. area. Once again, this is where it shows you some of the settings for the breakout for the back DB25. Again, not using that right now. I don't have the remote e-stop enabled and I'm not using a probe right now. But when I do get that set up, then I will make some changes in here as required. Last area of the user interface is the admin area here. This is uh, where you can upgrade the firmware automatically if it is connected to the network. You can back up and restore your configuration. I highly recommend once you get the machine configured properly that you do back up the configuration. It's a simple JSON file, which is a text format. Um, but if something were to happen, if you had to replace your controller or something blows up and you need to do something, then you can just instantly restore your machine to its previous state by uploading that file after the fact. The next area here is the network area. This is where you can set your host name on your network if you're using a network, uh, the remote user ID, for example, here, which I have changed, and then set up the machine in the Wi-Fi area. Now, I will tell you the machine has two separate Wi-Fi options, which is very interesting and very unique. So I have mine set to client mode. That is where I have connected the machine as a client to my home Wi-Fi, or at least one of my Wi-Fis, I have many, <laughs> um, and then set the password, obviously. The the other alternative is to set it in access point mode. That is where the One Infinity will broadcast an access point and you can set the SSID. And then using your phone, you can connect, or your computer, you can connect to that access point. And so that makes it a server in some regard. So you can still use your computer 
to look at what is on the machine or control the machine even if you don't have Wi-Fi wherever your machine is. So it actually creates that Wi-Fi access point for you to connect with a computer or your phone and control the machine. So that could be incredibly useful for folks who might have their machine, for example, in their garage where there's no Wi-Fi or there's weak Wi-Fi signal um, or that metal enclosure around the Wi-Fi is causing some issues with the Wi-Fi. So um, if you do want to use your machine in network mode and you don't have that Wi-Fi then I do recommend just setting it up in access point mode and then it'll broadcast that. Now while you're connected to the machine you can't do anything on the internet which is a little bit of a bummer um, but you can upload files using Wi-Fi which is what I do rather than using the USB stick. It's a lot easier and I will show that next. So we're back here in the user interface on the main screen or the control screen and I want to walk through the buttons here in the middle and talk about what they do and why they're important. So Right off the bat, you have the play button. This is when you tell the machine you want to command the machine to start executing the G code that you have set here. You select the play button. When you select the play button, it will change from a little arrow there to a double line or a pause button. And so if you want to stop the machine, well, if you want to pause the execution of the G code, you select that button again. And then when you're ready to restart, you select it again and it'll go back to the pause button. Now, if you want to stop the G-code execution completely such that it'll start over from line one when you are done, then you select the stop button while it is playing. And so this is important to understand the difference between pause, which means it'll start up where it left off, and stop, which means it goes back to the beginning of the G-code. So if you do want to stop it for some reason, or something's going wrong and you need to reset everything, just go ahead and select that stop button. Now, the machine will finish its current operation, whatever it is in the middle of doing, before it actually stops moving when you select the stop button. So if it is doing a long you know, X movement or for whatever, it'll go to that position before it'll stop executing. But if you're in the middle of something like an arc with a bunch of little segments, it'll stop almost immediately during that operation. So just keep that in mind. If something really goes wrong, you wanna stop it, maybe you wanna use the e-stop button, not the stop button. So the next area is this little file icon here. This is where you can upload G code files to the Onefinity. So by selecting this button, it's gonna prompt you to select your file name and then you click it and it's gonna upload it automatically and it'll show up as the selected file in this dropdown. Now you can see here, I have a number of files that I've already used. Um, I don't generally delete them, Right now, I will, if you have a lot of files, you should delete them. But what this allows me to do, if I have a project that I need to make many copies of, that file will be here all the time. You don't have to upload it each time. You just select it from the drop down, set your zero position, and you're off to the races. Next icon here is the download button. What this allows you to do is whatever file is selected here, you can download it. So if you have a lot of files and you wanna start pruning it, right, then you select the file, you can say download the file. It's gonna show you here, it's gonna preview. Then you download the file and then you can select the delete button. And it'll ask you, do you really want to delete this G code? And you have two options here. So I just wanna sensitize you to this. You can delete everything on the machine or just the one that you selected. You cannot, however, select more than one, but not all. <laughs> so it might be a little nice if when you select delete, it would give you a set of check boxes where you can select maybe four or five or six uh, and delete those rather than deleting all of them or just the one, but you know, it's really up to you. An alternative, if you're really um, adventurous, let's say you can remote into your machine using secure shell um, and delete the files automatically, reboot your machine, and then they will disappear all at once there as well. Uh, that's an advanced feature, which I would not recommend unless you are comfortable remoting in your machine and you have a fairly good understanding of Unix and Raspberry Pis, uh, and you understand the consequences of, <laughs> of deleting things on your Raspberry Pi, because things could go south pretty quickly if you are not careful. Well, that was the video. I hope you found it useful and informative. I know that was a rapid run through the user interface, but I wanted to give you the kind of wave tops, the high level of all the details of using the Onefinity user interface. If there's something specific that you want me to dive into or some specific question you have, please leave your comments down below. Very helpful. If you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but tell me why and we'll make future videos better. If you're not already following me on on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this 
that become future videos. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you for getting this far. Thank you for watching the video. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. Ringing that bell, very important these days. And don't forget to be inspired. Here, this is the start button for the G code that you have entered. Hi. I heard you barking up there. That was really awesome. Actually, it was Thor that was barking, wasn't it? Yeah, I know. Wiggle butt. Go lay down. Oh, yeah, I can see. Good cool. girl. Good girl. Okay. Do you see that right there? <laughs> Do you see that? How many times have you done this? We're recording. Good girl. Go ahead. Go lay down. Good girl. Go play. <laughs> Where the hell was I? <laughs> what you see in front of you... Ooh, interesting. We got some uh, stuff here. Okay. <laughs>